we are back with A43 TV, and now I have Channing Heist joining me, who is the Director of Communications at Osprey Village. Channing, nice to see you. Hey, it's nice to see you too, Catherine. Well, we have a lot to talk about because I haven't seen you in a while, so we want to get an update of what's going on at Osprey Village. So as being the Director of Communication, I first want to say I think you've done a great job marketing. I can hear your um, ads on the radio station, and I think they're great. They're just a good way for people to understand what we have in our community and getting the word out what is Osprey Village. And tell us a little bit about, from your perspective, what is your mission? Well, my mission in, in my job is to make sure that uh, everyone in the community understands what we're trying to accomplish, trying to increase the independence and freedom and ultimately the happiness of adults with developmental disabilities and trying to create that community buy-in, which I think is so uh, right for creating around here. We have that kind of a community and we can, we can use that fact that we have the kind of community that we do in order to get people on board with this. Because if we work together, and people donate and people believe in this mission, we can definitely make this happen. Not just with the village that we're creating in Hardyville, but with the services and getting people out there to a point where they can become the best and most efficient and happiest person that they're capable of being, because that's the ultimate goal. You're right, that is the ultimate goal. But you know, before we got on camera, you were sharing a couple of stories with me, which I'd like you to share with the audience, because I think it helps people understand what, how these services help somebody. Could you share one of the stories with us? Sure. The story I love to tell, Catherine, and I've said this to you before, but I want everybody to hear this. You know, we, we go through our lives and sometimes we, we are able to take things for granted. It is such a, in fact, a gift to be able to take certain things for granted in your life. But we're working with a part of the community that can't always do that. And these, these little pieces of minutia in our day, these little uh, chores that we do in the day, it assumes a much different level with somebody who has had not had the opportunity to learn how to do laundry, to learn how to live more on their own. One of my favorite stories is, is a story I heard from a colleague, a coworker of mine, about a young woman who was literally learning how to do her laundry. And it was so exciting to her. Now that's something that most people, you say laundry, excitement is not the first word you think of. Right. But these people value the opportunity for freedom and uh, and and autonomy and, and just the opportunity to be themselves and to participate in, in as many parts of life as they can. And it is so valuable when you hear somebody getting so excited about laundry, it just gives you some idea of how much these folks are gonna value the the community that we're, we're gonna be building in Hardyville and just the, the opportunity to learn things that other people take for granted. It, it, you know, that you can make something happy uh, out of laundry is just one of a hundred examples I could give you about how these folks look at the world and what it would mean to them to just be able to live a lot like everybody else gets to live. I understand. I mean, that is important. I mean, you're giving them skill sets because they, they really want to have independence and this is how you give them the ability, correct? Exactly. Exactly. I, I'd like to ask, uh, what is the age group or, uh, for, this, for the, your participants? Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's it's 21 and up. Okay. Uh, now we we have had conversations with people who are younger than that uh, because you can, as we always like to say, you can never start too early to plan your future. Uh, you don't want to get to a point. See, what happens is, 18 they age out of the system, and we don't want people. That one of the reasons we created Osprey Village was that we don't want people falling off of a cliff. Right. Uh, when they when they turn that so. Uh, what we're trying to do is create a transition where they can enter their adult life with all the services that they need to make the most of their own lives and they don't drop off the, that services cliff. Right, well that's important. So, so it is 21 and over. Yeah, well, I'd like to ask you this then. Um, funding, that's the, that's the biggest thing, you know, and you're always searching for government funding. Um, what is the hardest, the most challenging part right now for you of 2021 coming forward? Well, uh, one of our one of our a couple of our challenges. First of all, in terms of services, we're always trying to work with uh, local county and state officials to see what we can do about uh, streamlining the way we get services to people, the length and breadth of those services, how it goes through the pipeline. Uh, there's always that issue of of the waiting lists that people end up on. 
uh, and, and that's true of, of every state, but uh, people end up in rather lengthy waiting lists just uh, sitting there until they can get on the list for services. We're trying to shorten that. Um, but as far as our, our efforts to get the uh, neighborhood built, uh, we're looking at various funding sources. We're looking at uh, federal, state, local, public sector, private sector funding sources. So that's really been our focus, figuring out how do you raise the millions of dollars that, that you need to do this? And of course, we're also going to be entering into a capital campaign, an ongoing capital campaign. So if there are any visionary investors out there, we want to hear from you. You know, I've now been interviewing you for a good year or two, and you've always had great fundraisers. You've had golf tournaments. You've always had some great things, but now we're challenged. And I understand since we can't have our gatherings like we used to, you have a program coming up now. Can you tell us about that and how people can support it? Your fundraiser. Yeah, the fundraiser. Right, yes. It, it, it's amazing because I'll tell you, what are the, one of the great advantages of, of, of being a person with a disability is you learn how to you learn how to innovate, you learn how to adapt on the fly because your life is about adaptation. We've had to adapt since since COVID and we've done a lot of virtual things. Uh, our latest venture right now is not a virtual thing, but it's, it's a raffle. We've decided to hold our first ever raffle. It's going to be, we're calling it a semi-annual raffle because we're doing it more, than, we're planning on doing it more than once. Uh, so we've got that going. The tickets are $40. You can buy a three pack for $100. The drawing is March 2nd. There are three top prizes. Top prize is $5,000, then $3,000 and $1,000. So there's a, there's a lot to be won there. It's an exciting thing to be part of. And we're also looking at uh, other ways we can, that ways we can do those virtual fundraisers that, we, that we've talked about. We've had, we, we've come up with ideas, like maybe we'll do a fashion show at some point, that sort of thing. So we're really excited about combining the in-person activities that we do with the new world of virtual. This is, you know, we didn't plan on any of this, but it's opened up a whole new world for us in terms of how you can do a fundraiser. Yep. Well, you know, Channing, it's always, I want everybody to understand that it's, it's really important to support this. They can go to your website, they can go call and find out information about how to support this particular funding event, correct? Absolutely. We can, you can, if you want to participate in the raffle, you can purchase tickets on our website. There's a link. Uh, you can call our, our uh, corporate office. Uh, you can uh, send a check to our PO box and indicate how many tickets you want and we'll mail them to you. So there are several ways you can participate in that. And we'll be uh, continuing to uh, inform the community about future fundraisers as well. So we'll be looking for that. Well, Channing, our time is up. It goes quickly. We have so much to talk about, but I want to thank you for joining me yeah. and success to you as well. Well, thank you, Catherine. I always appreciate your support, and it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you, and I want to thank you for joining me with 843 TV, where communities come to speak.